on this computer. Those okay. are so cute, Adam. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, so you can flatten it under your pillow to sleep, any number of things. So uh, you can make lots of them or none, whichever. So the little bags come in uh, little packets, dollar store, different colors. So that's it for uh, a sachet bag. For this one's lavender. I guess you can make them any flavor you want. Okay. And now just let me just repeat the recipe because we weren't recording at the at first. Tablespoon of lavender buds if you've got them. Tablespoon of rice or just all rice, whichever. I put about eight drops of lavender oil, and in the bag. All right. You're up. Yep. I'm okay. On. Hey, Elizabeth, there's a couple more people in the waiting room. Oh, um, you. If you want to make me a co-host, I can let them in or... I don't know how to do that. And Mitch tried and it didn't work to get... Um... So if you just go into settings and just turn the waiting room off, then we don't. Sorry. Where do I go to settings? Let's mm. more. Nope. Um, Switch, do you know where settings are? They're in. They're in. Oh. Yeah, I, I just added them in. But uh, okay, so now Gail was just saying she was waiting. She must have gotten kicked off or something. Um, okay, so Victoria, if someone else gets in, then just notice me because I'm not seeing where. No, I'm not seeing where I can um, take it off. So, okay, if you'll just watch and make sure and tell me, then I will try to glance over there and see. Okay, the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to make um, a room spray. I don't know. You stir that. It's solidified on me. Um, so we're going to make a cute little room, room spray. Um, the, this is great that you can just sp spritz around in a room um, and make it smell good. You can, my bottles are, um, <sighs> my bottles are two ounces. And so I cut the drops, the, the recipes that I sent you are for four ounces. And I think I just said two drops. This is two ounces. And um, so I just cut the drops in half. So it's really easy. You, you get whatever size spray bottle that you've got. And you can put, and this is not in the recipe, but you can put a quarter teaspoon of Epsom salts in the bottom. And then you put your drops of, um, of oil in. And I'm making the holiday cheer blend. So I'm gonna put five drops, which it's really easy on my bottles that I've got um, the dropper tops on already. And five Siberian fur. And three spearmint. And one clove. And then just shake those around a little bit. And the purpose of that is that the Epsom salts absorb the, um, get with the oil and the Epsom salts helps the oil stay in solution with the water. Um, now, I learned the hard way that a little teeny um, funnel is a very valuable asset when you're trying to get things into a small opening. So you put about a third to a half of witch hazel in there, and my shadow is making it so I can't see. Um, 
And the witch hazel also helps it stay in solution. And then the other thing that I learned is you want to use distilled water because you don't want anything to start, um, start growing in your, um, in your water, in your spray. And distilled water will help you with that. So I made the mistake of trying to <laughs> pour out of my gallon jug of distilled water into, even into this and into my little bottle. And guess what? <laughs> it was a disaster. So put it in a little cup. And a lot of it was just that I couldn't see. With a gallon, I couldn't see. So fill the bottle up with um, the distilled water. And then put your spray top on. And then you can, um, you know, just twist it back and forth a little bit. And then you've got your, you've got your spray. So Ida and I are going to be really cheerful around here. Between my joy and my holiday cheer, then we're going to do it. You don't have to do the Epsom salts. It is smart to still shake your bottle before um, you spray it. Um, so any questions on that? Or Elizabeth, how much uh, Epsom salts did you say? I put between a quarter and a half teaspoon. Thank you. Okay. So now we are going to do something really fun. Who has, I'm semi-organized here even, to be able to have things all kind of in the, in the right place um, so that you can see it. So has anybody heard of lotion bars? Lotion bars are this coolest thing. Um, I don't know where my one is. It's, it's lotion in a bar and you just rub it, you know, rub your hands on it and you have to rub just a tiny bit. Um, it doesn't absorb in um, as fast as like commercial lotion that you might have, but it is, oh, your hands feel so much better. And so I am going to show you one of the things that I think lots of pans and muffin tins and everything are coming in as silicone molds. And so I've got this fun one that's hearts, which is what I made my first batch out of. So this, these soaps are, um, well, you can't see it across my background. They're little hearts anyway. Or you can do, these are candy molds. Or, you know, they've got the bite-sized brownie pans. You can do them in that. It just needs to be silicone to make your life easier. You could probably make other things work, but silicone will make it much, 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 much easier. So to do it, what you're going to do is get a glass measuring cup, a glass jar. You do need to have it so that it is taller than the pan that you're doing it in because I didn't do that and I had no troubles. So this calls for cocoa butter and beeswax pastilles, which I don't know that you can see them very well, but, um, and then it's just the coconut oil that you can get at Costco or at the grocery store, the stuff that's solid. And it is, um, I made, so right now I'm just doing half a recipe because the other half of the recipe is already melted. So you just put it into a measuring cup or whatever glass container you've got. And then you're gonna put them in a pan of um, boiling water and it's gonna melt. My cocoa butter was a little bit old and it is rock, um, rock hard. <laughs> it is rock solid, solid hard. But it's so I just kind of chipped it in and so this is a third of a cup of the cocoa butter and it was a fourth of a cup of the coconut oil and a third of a cup of the beeswax pastilles. And you just dump it all in together 
and then you take it and I think what I'm going to do here is um, I'm just going to show you the setup here. So I've got a frying pan here because it lets me have this up higher and I just put my measuring cup into the hot water and it takes a little while to um, it takes a little while to get it so that it's melted um, enough. Oh, and then you do a half teaspoon of vitamin E oil. And you can get vitamin E oil at Sprouts, Whole Foods. I think you can probably get it at Walgreens. You can get it at Walmart. You can get the, um, the cocoa butter and the beeswax at um, any of the natural food stores um, that you can do it with. And then what you want to do is after it has cooled a little bit or a lot, I'm going to leave that in there, then you want to add um, drops. Now the cocoa butter, I found the cocoa butter has a slight chocolate smell. It's a, it's a you know, fairly subdued one. And the recipe says to put in um, 15 drops of essential oil. I did, my first batch, I did 15 drops of Citrus Bliss because I love Citrus Bliss. I can smell the cocoa butter, I can't smell the Citrus Bliss. So um, this time on this batch, I'm going to do um, a lot more drops, but I'm doing um, peppermint and wild orange. So I'm, I'm going to do about 10 drops of each. Now, the thing to be aware of is this stuff sets up really fast. So, but if it gets setting up too fast, then you just um, remelt it. Remelt it. And you can remelt it in the, you can melt it the first time in the microwave. So I've got a whole bunch of hard ones. So I'm going to do it in these little teeny um, candy ones. So they're little um, itty bitty. But if you do it in a measuring cup, then it makes it way easier. And you just pour it in. And then um, it would have been smart if I had put something solid under this before I started putting, <laughs> pouring stuff in it. <laughs> because we can just slide it. Over this there. might be interesting. Yeah, we might just slide it to the side. It does set up pretty fast, um, but then you want to let it sit for two or three hours, and then I'm going to make. I'm going to take this away. Thank you. Um, but let it sit up um, a couple of hours, and then it will. It starts getting hard, and then you can just pop them out. And then I just got some. I want you guys to be impressed. I didn't spill any of it. Um, so just leave it. I, I actually will probably leave it till in the morning. And then they're going to be, they're soft, but um, they're, you can pop them out and just wrap them in saran wrap and they're ready to go. And you can put a bow on them or you can do it, anything like that that you want. So, but I think that you will be really impressed if you do it. And like the ones in the hearts are already starting to solidify down at the bottom. So it, it gets thick pretty fast. So you've got to work fast with the, um, putting the oils in it. Or you can just you know put, turn the water on again and, and heat it up. So that is lotion bars. I hope you'll try them because they're really cool. And I really like them. Um, all right, next up, we are, I'm gonna remind the people on Facebook, if you haven't said hi yet, say hi, um, so we know you're here. Um, Ida is going to show us how to do a really cool healing sap. Okay. All right, we're gonna 
for now. All right. Uh, I've been making this quite a long time. Um, I split the recipe. I'm just doing a third. So a third recipe will make this much. I had to take it away from my husband to show you. Uh, he just, nice big jar. He could just reach in, scoop it up, put it on. Terrific for summer feet, heels, cracked toes, everything. So um, I use the beeswax, they're in here. The coconut oil, again, the solid one. Olive oil and vitamin E oil. So I cutting it in third. Oh, well, you'll see the recipe, okay? So what I did was uh, did it in the microwave and I do it in little spurts. Let me get a paper towel. Okay, thank you. Because it, it will melt very quickly. Thank you. So she's doing that. Um, I use all kinds of jars. I use the jars from my creams, give them to family. They just like it. My brother dearly loves it. He has uh, diabetes, so their skin is so dry. These little guys are from uh, Dr. O'Keefe's. <laughs> and it's great on cracked heels. Yes, Dr. O'Keefe's. Uh, and I just pull off the labels and just reuse them. So I make these all the time. Uh, I'm going to put, yeah, it's about done. She, 30 second spurts, we don't want to burn it. What I'm going to put in it is lavender oil, which is so good for your skin, and lemon oil, which is cleansing to your skin, and the melaleuca, which is healing and antibacterial. So these are really good skin ones. You can optionally put in frankincense. I thought I grabbed frankincense, but this was on guard, but I could put that in it too. So. Those are just those basics. Uh, it doesn't smell a whole lot, but you know those things are good for you and they're in it. So that's what I will put in it. Oh, just a teeny bit more. Okay, just a little more. So maybe the, uh, the difference in the, the microwave power or whatever. So for this, Splitting the recipe in thirds, I'm going to put three drops of lavender, two of lemon, and two of tea tree. I should have said tea tree. Okay. You can label these. You can print out labels on your computer, cut them out. Uh, you, can, you, know, you can do it easy peasy at, or, you know, more pretty and expensive. You can wrap them, uh, put a ribbon around them, whatever. These sorts of things are being obnoxious. They're, yeah, they're not melting. <laughs> but this still is only taking, um, it's only been two minutes. Well, it's been a minute and a half. When I make the, uh, the full recipe, I can end up with several of these and even bigger jars. You can use uh, like mason jars of what, a half pint? Half pint. Half pint. I really do like to get something with a nice uh, opening, uh, especially for people to reach in. I have little glass jars with uh, the little rubber uh, cap in them. To I got them at Michael's. I use those like for my face, my lips, whatever. Have them at at my bedside. Okay, we're good to go. So one of the things you'll notice, like this is a body butter container. Save any containers yes. that you've got. Um, I've got some, I keep my moisturizer containers and you can put stuff like that in, in this into those. So save your empty containers because they're great. There was a stray beeswax thing. Yeah, we got it. And anytime if it starts to set up on you uh, too quickly, you can just go and remelt. And uh, 
I make the big recipe in a double boiler because I need uh, the size. I'm sure, I think I'm going to <laughs> need another container. Or I can just leave it in my measuring cup. Maybe not. Yeah, I have more. Well, I have this little jar. Yeah, I bet that would be, would be just about right. Yeah. Yeah, about half of this one. Okay. So that is healing balm or healing salve, whichever way you want to call it. Okay, you're up? Yep. He's up. I will move this. Okay. We are going to do bath salts. And bath salts are just so fun and so easy. And you just take, it's, um, it's two parts kosher salt, which is a coarser, you know, coarser salt, and two parts Epsom salt, and then one part baking soda. You want the baking soda because it makes your skin really soft. And you just dump them all in there. And then you mix them up and just mix it really up really good. So one of the things with um, bath salts is they're really relaxing. They're really rejuvenating to your skin. Um, they are, they're, um, they're just really good for you, but you can also use bath salts for a detox bath. And a detox bath is if you are starting to come down with, um, if you're, if you're starting to come down with symptoms of the flu or symptoms of anything else, then there are certain oils that you can use for certain ailments. And Rebecca is the queen. So if you know Rebecca, just skip Victoria and Gail and I and just go straight to Rebecca. Um, if you don't know Rebecca, then talk to us and we'll talk to, Re I'll talk to Rebecca and she'll tell me which ones to use. But if you, to do a detox bath, then you want to take a cup of um, bath salts and Rebecca chime in if I'm saying wrong. Um, you take a cup of the um, bath salts that are all combined and put the oils in that are good for, because for different things then you want to put different um, oils in. And then you soak in a warm bath, as, as warm as you can comfortably stand it, then you soak for 15 or 20 minutes. If you've got something that's really serious and that is really um, knocking you down, then, um, then do it two or three times a day. Um, you don't have to just do once a day. Sometimes once a day will um, work and sometimes not. And so the um, detox baths are something to really keep in mind. Um, Rebecca has got some really good stories last year she was starting to come down with the flu and she did some detox baths. I think she did two or three in one day and she was over the flu in a day. And so it is great. Bath salts are really great to give as gifts. You can just put them in a mason jar and put a little cute um, label on the top of them. You can get at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or whatever then you can get these cute little um, ornaments that are, um, they're plastic and the, the tops come off. Well, if I take the top off right now, then I'm going to spill it all over. But again, use your funnel and put them in here and then you can decorate, put ribbons, whatever. You can make these little ornaments and it's a fun way to give bath salts. Um, just another cute idea is you can get these test tube things. Okay, so there, you can kind of see it. 
Um, I don't know if you can see the, yeah, there, now you can see the face. There, that's close enough that you can see the face. So you can do lots of um, fun things. Um, bath salts are just a really easy gift. They're a really fast gift, but they are really relaxing. So after you've got this really mixed together, then you can either just give it, if it's somebody that's got a lot of oils, then you can just give them the bath salts and say, add five to 10 drops. And like when I do it in a jar, I just add the drops and then I just shake the jar and it's really good. Um, or if you know that people are needing, um, needing help sleeping or relaxing, then put um, Serenity in here. I would probably put like 15 drops of Serenity in this and this is um, three cups worth of bath salts because I put like, no, it's two and a half because I put a cup of kosher salt, a cup of Epsom salts, and a half cup of baking soda. Um, if you're doing just a regular bath, then do a fourth to a half a cup um, per bath. It also depends on the size of your bathtub. But if you're doing a detox bath, then you want to use more. You can do it with just Epsom salts. Um, the Epsom salts and the kosher salts, one of the things that they do is they keep the oil, you're adding it to the, the salts, it keeps the oil so it's dispersed in the water rather than just floating on top of the water. So bath salts are super fun, super easy. Um, this little jar is one that, um, you know, better than bouillon to make chicken bouillon soup and stuff. Um, then it, this is just an empty jar um, that I just washed out for this. So you can, you can put bath salts in whatever you want and um, it will work. All right, um, lip balm. Lip balm? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, lip balm, super easy. You know, Elizabeth, I need a container to put this in. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm out of containers. Uh, so the other night I thought I would try it, make sure I was doing this correctly. Lip balm, uh, I've made many, many, many times, or I can just leave it in this oh, the, and then you can melt it. In that. Yeah. yeah, okay. So uh, it's got the coconut oil, the beeswax, and shea butter. All right. So I put, uh, uh, here's where it gets optional. We can, we can start melting it, I think. Okay, yeah. 30 seconds. Yeah. So I'll tell you what this recipe makes. Makes six of these little guys. They're like this. This is what it looks like in there. No biggie. Uh, rather than mixing a bunch of oils and putting them in, I did separate. This one is spearmint, on guard, lavender, lemon, wild orange, and peppermint. And it made all of those, plus this one, which is, uh, I don't know, I had some cream or a sample or something. It's for me, so I filled it with lip balm. So it makes that much. There are other little uh, containers, if you want a little bigger, this one goes all the way to the bottom. Some are just uh, kind of rounded and they're about half this, they're this size, but inside they're half the size. So you can do pretty much what you want. Um, mixing them, oh, here's what I did. So I, I poured them in, so you gotta be quick. Have every, all your oils ready. I wasn't quite ready. I thought I knew what I was doing. So I, they were all laying there. I filled each one and then I went to get my oils and I came back and they were set. <laughs> so I had to microwave each one and make it, you know, liquefy it again and uh, then put in the oil. So get yourself organized first. So would it be good to just pour it in one and add the oil? And good then idea. pour it in another one and add the oil? See? Because it'll stay hot. Yeah. In a bigger quantity. It does. I don't know that it might still get hard on me, but. That's a really good idea. So anyway, you'll learn these things. 
Um, I want to tell a caution uh, about the coconut oil, the solid one, you know, all of this is solidifying. So I use glass a lot. On um, plastic, it's just not, it doesn't work as well. I take a paper towel and I scrape as much or all of the, uh, whatever I made, like the bees, uh, the bees, everything. So it's gonna get solid. I scrape it out and then I put them in the dishwasher because you don't want to send cocoa butter down your drain. It'll, so, you know, it'll get solid in there. So, you know, start pretty soon, you'll just have a big clog of <laughs> coconut oil, I guess. So don't pour it down the drain, you know, anything, any excess, just put it in the trash. But I just wipe them out really well with a paper towel and throw it away. Same thing with my, my spoons, my measuring cups. I use a wooden uh, spatula because it can use some oil. It would, you know, it, it does it good so it won't be splintery or anything, okay? So Elizabeth is getting a uh, container. What flavor do you want, Elizabeth? <laughs> oh. oh, okay. Because I think we ended up using your container for something different. Yeah, we did. Okay, so what would you like? These are yours. <laughs> um, not lavender. Oh, oh that's right. Um, do you know what? Um, do where did okay. I put it? Where's my lemon? Uh, do a lemon and, and do some tangerine. Okay, so like like three of them. Yeah. yeah. All right. So it was uh, two to four drops of each, and then we can pour it in. Eeks. <laughs> okay. okay, this one is a lemon. I'm gonna do, and you can really feel that and smell and kind of taste that uh, flavor on your lips. So arthritic hands can't open these very oh. good. And I'm going to, so that I can remember, okay. I'm just putting a piece of masking tape on the top. And then if I forget that those are the lemon, then okay. somebody's going to remind me. Okay, so one more? Yeah. All right. Okay. You got, all right, she's got it. All right, so now, it's a little hot, but that's okay. And I meant, usually I do this in... in a uh, measuring cup. So it's just much, much easier. Any stuff like this, yeah, if you're gonna end up pouring it, do it in a measuring cup. We both learned the hard way on that. And I noticed today that I don't have any tangerine, so that's going on an order again here in a day. Okay, so yeah, right. there's, because we can do that one. I can't get it open. Um, oh, here's one. Yeah. Oh, and here's the other lid. So that's one thing, I guess. So these are so, you know, it, it gets on there flush. So it's, they are hard to open. All right. Tangent. Ladies, we do have a question about the lip balm. Okay. Uh, the question is, how does the citrus oil, how do the citrus oils do when wearing the lip balm outside in the sun? You have to worry about that? Um, if you, my guess, Victoria, feel free to chime in on this or <laughs> Rebecca. My guess is that if you are, if I'm going to the grocery store and I'm in and out of the grocery store and the car and everything, that it's not going to hurt. If I'm going down and laying on the beach, then it probably isn't the wisest decision. But that would be my guess. Well, it, it also is not a problem if you're wearing a mask. Yes, <laughs> this is true. <laughs> you got that one. This is very, very true. Very true. Okay. And so, do you go ahead and put the lids on before they solidify, or do you? Either way, yeah. They'll either way they'll it do it. They're it going won't to steam up. Or it's anything. not going to hurt it. Not a bit. Okay. Any other questions? Let's see. Are these the oh. orange or the tangerine yeah. or the lemon up here? Yeah. This one is a. 
entry. Okay. And actually, we have a little extra today. So it makes plenty. One recipe makes a lot. It does. Okay. And I don't know if you can tell, but they are setting up already very quickly. That's why I messed up. But, you know, it's very forgiving. And so, you know, all of these things are, are very forgiving and it all ends up working out. Because you can remelt it or, you know, do whatever you want. So, all right. I advertised. Thank you. That Thank we you. were going to do um, some yummy treats. Oh, here's the recipe right here. Okay, so I want you to be impressed at how, um, how organized I tried to be. Okay, so this is my food processor. And you want to get, this recipe takes a package of Oreo cookies. Um, Rebecca had told me that she uses the, um, she has done some with the um, vanilla Oreo cookies. And so I got some, but I got, I realized that I got the thin ones. And I think that that's not a good idea because you need the, the cream cheese and stuff that's in the middle. You need the stuffing to help make the, the stuff. But I wanted to show you, well, two things. So this, oops, sometimes I thought I had everything all really, um, ground up fine and I still ended up with a chunk like that. So you wanna look and see if you've got the chunks because that will end up messing things up later. Um, but, so this is the one, you, you do them in the food processor until they get really fine. And you do the whole package of um, Oreos. Um, so you get them really fine. It works, for my food processor, it works easier if you, um, do if you put it fuller if i just put five or six in it was really hard to get them crushed really fine and so fill it up i did like a whole row of out of the cookie container in there if you see that you've got stuff like this then take it out and eat it so then you are going to so you've got a whole package of chocolate sandwich cookies then you get an eight ounce package of cream cheese that you've let sit out and soften. And you mix it. Um, you mix the cream cheese and all the crumbs. And so again, I, I did up part of a recipe so you can see. So it's, it's pretty clumpy. And you can see that it's gonna stick together, you know, it's going to stick together really well. So that's the stage that you meet, um, beat it to. I figured you guys did not need to see me and go through the noise of me grinding and beating this stuff. So when you have gotten to that stage, then you, um, we'll do this. If you've got one of these, um, which Christy, here's for Pampered Chef, my advertisement. If you've got one of these little scoops, Pampered Chef or otherwise, it is really good. You use a little one and you just get in and get it and then put a ball. And you just go through and make balls. And then this doesn't make them super nice looking. So I have clean hands and I just roll it into balls. And then you um, stick it in the freezer. And the magic of television. <laughs> then, voila, I have got a whole tray. So this is half a recipe here that I have had in the freezer. And you need to have them frozen. 
And then I have had um, mixed chocolate chips and two tablespoons of coconut oil. Um, and you can put it in a bowl, you can put it in a measuring cup, you can put it in a double boiler, um, anything you want, really. Um, and put it in, I don't have a good, I haven't had good luck melting chocolate in the um, microwave, so I don't usually do that. But um, this way worked really well, and it stayed, you know, it stayed soft. Now, it calls for five drops of peppermint oil. Um, the first batch that I did, and, well, I'll show you the finished product in a minute. Uh, the first batch I did, I put the peppermint oil in the chocolate. Um, this batch, I put the peppermint oil in the balls. Now, when I make up my um, blonde Oreo ones, I think I'm going to try um, wild orange or tangerine or something yeah. like that. I'm going to see how that tastes. But you just take, okay, let me make sure I've got, I need this. Okay, so you just take, um, I've got in this bowl, I've got melted chocolate. I think you can see it better on Facebook than in here. And you just drop it in and um, roll it around. And then I found that using a fork that, you know, a meat fork like this, um, yeah, is makes it really easy, and you just stick them in and roll them around. If you wanted to, you could um, then roll it in crushed peppermint. You could um, roll it in um, cocoa powder. You could do them. You know, you could roll them in coconut. Um, so you do all of these and roll them and then put those in the refrigerator. So this is what um, the finished ones look like. And they do do better if you keep them in the refrigerator. But they get nice and soft and they're way too yummy. So that's what they, uh, that's what they end up looking like. And um, I started out with over 50 and there aren't very many left. And I don't know whether Waylon didn't figure out that I had them there or whether he just didn't eat them, but I've been eating way too many. So hopefully the rest of these are going to go in the freezer and go for Christmas when I have my children around. Okay, so are you ready for something just really fun? Are there any other questions for any? Gail and Rebecca, just let me know if there's questions because I'll stop and try to answer them. Okay, so there are, the next one thing we're going to do is aromatic hand warmers. Now, we are, I am so excited, we are going up to a family cabin that is up by Yellowstone Park for Christmas. Um, it is not unusual at night to be 15, 20 degrees below zero. And I don't care if you've got ski gloves on, your hands still get cold. So this is along the same line as a bean bag that you can then stick in the microwave and get warm. And then you've got that you can stick it in your pockets and you can get your hands warm. Is this genius or what? So you take to make them, they are super easy. You just cut out two four inch squares of, it does need to be flannel, it needs to be cotton. Um, because if you do a polyester or a nylon fabric or a fabric that has polyester in it, when you put it in the microwave, it will get extra hot and it might melt and it would be not good. So you want it, it can be any fabric. I happen to have flannel and I like the feeling of flannel, so I just did flannel. So you've got the flannel, and then you take it and you sew it, um, let's see, you sew it on three sides. So this one, I started right here, and I sew down and around and up here and this. So you wanna leave a hole right there. 
Then you just take your fingers and turn it right side out. And you can use a, um, you can use a pin to get in and get the corners out or you skewer, can wooden skewer. use a skewer. You can use a wooden or a me um, metal skewer and just kind of poke the corners out. And you end up with a nice little thing like this made with a little bit. And, and I press them so that they look good. Plus it presses the, the little flaps, um, the flaps down. When I get up close, then it gets it in the shadow. And so I'm not sure that you can see it. But it's just a quarter inch seam. So you're just so, sewing a square. Then you take rice or flaxseed or wheat or um, pinto beans, dried any kind of dried beans. And I don't know that the dried beans would absorb the oils, but I did a cup of um, rice last night because that's what I had um, that was easy. And I put holiday joy in it. Um, since we're gonna use these at Christmas, I figured that that would be a good thing. And you just put, um, in the recipe it says how many drops per cup of rice for flaxseed. So you just put it in and stir it around a bunch and let it sit. The recipe says for five minutes. And then again, get a funnel. And this looks huge. This is bigger than my little pocket. But its hole is big enough that the rice is gonna go through easy. So you just stick that in there. It makes it so much easier, just believe me. And you wanna get it so that it, um, it is about three-fourths full. Oh, I've got just a little bit left, so it's going in. And it's three-fourths of the way full, about. I could put a little bit more in this. And then you're going to take it down and um, sew it on your sewing machine. I don't want rice all over, so I'm pinning it here. So these are four inch squares and then you end up with, it's just sewn on the outside on this one little, um, on this one side um, that you can kind of see. And it's 20 to 30 seconds. 30 seconds made this almost too hot. Um, it probably, <laughs> when I'm up at zero degrees in 30 seconds will probably be good. But um, 30 seconds made it plenty warm last night. Um, when I was making these. And I have got the cutest little grandchildren. You saw um, Kent, he's four. We're gonna have a six-year-old, three, four-year-olds, um, an 18th month, a 13 month, and a three month old um, grandchildren at the cabin. So I thought the, this is a great size. The four inch, starting with four inch square is a great size for my hand. But I started with a three and a half, no, a three inch square. So they're gonna end up being two and a half inches. Um, I have cut out a whole bunch for my grandchildren that are gonna be itty bitty because they've got itty bitty hands. But this is super easy if you go skiing, if you've got friends that go skiing, if you are walking to the bus and it's super cold outside, these are great and they're easy and you could just use, you can use fabric that's left over. If you live by Rebecca, go over and she's got a fabric stash. If you live by me, I've got a fabric stash. I do too. And Ida has a fabric stash and we will give you ones to make, um, ones to make it. One width of a 45 inch fabric makes six. Uh, it makes four, four inch and it makes six, three inch ones. So that is the hand warmers. Okay, so our last thing is going to be raspberry ripple. Will you open the refrigerator slowly? Yeah. And there's, I think I made it so that on the bottom shelf, then there's a plate. That plate? Yes. So raspberry ripple is kind of like a chocolate bark. And what you do is you get a dinner plate. I decided to talk with you through this. You get a dinner plate and put parchment paper or I think it probably would work with wax paper 
and you put a third of a cup of frozen raspberries just sprinkled around and then a third of a cup of coconut and just spread it around. And then you get a third of a cup of the solid coconut oil, five tablespoons salted butter, two tablespoons raw cacao powder. Um, the difference between cocoa powder and cacao powder is the cocoa powder has been cooked and heated and the cacao powder hasn't. In the United States, then cacao powder, if, you, if you're going to a grocery store and not at Whole Foods or Sprouts, it probably is labeled as cacao, C-A-C-A-O. Um, but I had done some research and reading on it. And so I just went to Smith's and got a box that is labeled as cocoa, but it says that it is pure cacao powder. So that's what I used. And then the recipe calls for one teaspoon rice malt syrup. Well, I had never heard of rice malt syrup. I'm sure some of you have, Ida has probably, <laughs> but I also figured that I probably wouldn't use a whole lot of it. So I went on and Googled what I could use instead. And one of the substitutes for rice malt syrup is pure maple syrup. So you add a teaspoon of the, uh, the rice malt syrup or the maple syrup, and then you put it in the freezer and it gets, you know, it gets all solid. And then you can cut it into a pie or you can do it like bark and you can just break it into pieces. And wow. then you can, um, you can give Ida a piece to try Ooh. to see. So it's just a fun, easy thing. It doesn't, this is a whole recipe. It's just one plate. Um, I would say, it says it calls for frozen raspberries. I would have them mostly thawed um, before I did it. Mine were frozen and on part of this, I'm getting some juice out the bottom. So that is, I want you to notice it is, well, one clock says it's 7.59, nine projects in 59 minutes, less than 59 minutes because we chit chatted at the beginning a little bit. But I am so glad that you came and joined us. Um, if you've got, hopefully, it looks like there's a whole bunch of chat comments. Hopefully Gail's been keeping up on those. Um, if you have not already received an email with the recipes in it, then um, talk to whoever invited you. Um, Jan Radcliffe, I will send you one, um, a set of them. It's front and back of two pages, but it's got all the recipes, all the quantities, pretty good directions. Um, this, the Zoom recording will be up on my YouTube channel which is Unlocking Essential Oil Secrets. It is a public channel. So anybody, um, all of Rebecca's friends, you can go there and watch it. Um, and on that channel also are, uh, I've got, I'm up to about 25 product spotlights that you can listen to that um, about individual oils and tells you all sorts of cool things about individual oils and how to use them. But so the recording of this will be up on the YouTube channel and the recording will stay in the Facebook group. So um, if you want to re-listen to something, one part of it, you can go back. Please tell your friends and um, that they can go and do it. These all are pretty inexpensive um, pretty inexpensive projects and gifts and that is great and and they're unusual gifts and so that is something um, that is really good that we can um, have to give to our neighbors to give to um, our family um, my daughter-in-law is no longer on here so I can say this um, she's getting a lotion bar <laughs> all four of, all four of my daughter-in-laws are getting a lotion bar for Christmas um, and some neighbors and stuff. So there are lots of fun um, things. If you're on Zoom, if you want, you can unmute and comment or ask a question. And Facebook, um, I'm sure Rebecca has been taking care of you over on Facebook. But I am just so excited. I think we probably had about 25 people um, or more. I don't know for sure how many have been on um, 
Thanks, Elizabeth. Uh -huh. I do have I do have two questions from the Zoom chat. Okay. Mm -hmm. One person wants to know how long do those uh, hand warmers stay warm? Um, it will depend on what you, um, how cold of an environment you're in, and um, and what you put in them. My one for that I did last night, and I heated up, and I was inside, stayed warm for about a half an hour. I think that the dried beans will um, stay warm longer. You can do the same principle with just making, I've got a longer, a bigger one that I meant to bring out to show and I didn't, that you can put around your neck or um, that I use that to put, if I've got a headache, then I'll put it over my forehead and I'll put some peppermint oil on it and then put the bean bag on my forehead and it really helps. Or if my feet are really cold at night, then I use the longer one. If you want the directions and the dimensions for the longer one, then you can um, just text me, email me, whatever, and I will get you the directions. I've got the directions for those. Um, if you are going to a cold place, I've made some that are about that big. I have no idea how big that is, but about <laughs> that big. Um, we have a cabin in Angel Fire, and it takes 12 hours for the cabin to get warm in the winter. So I've got a whole bunch of bean bags up there that we put in the microwave and warm up our feet. And so it works really good. Okay, one more question. Uh -huh. uh, on the truffles, uh -huh. uh, which did you prefer, putting the peppermint in the chocolate or in the filling? And did it make a difference? Um. <laughs> Um, I haven't tried one with it in the, in the, in, in the filling. Um, I, to me, I think that they're about even. And just knowing me, I might put them in both. Rebecca likes them better in the filling. Um, but they're really good with it in the, in the outside chocolate too. Can I say something about that? Yes. Okay, thanks. Um, she's got a comment on the raspberry ripple. On the raspberry ripple. I just tried it and I'll have you know that it is very low sugar. <laughs> I mean, it's good. It very, but I expected it to be sweet, but it's not, but it's good. So, you know, got to watch that sugar stuff. Yeah. And this one has no um, essential oils in it, but you could certainly add um, one. I wouldn't add peppermint with the raspberries probably, but um, you could add um, some oils in with the chocolate. And I honestly haven't tried it yet, but it is all um, very natural, healthy stuff. It's a recipe Laura Jacobs came up with, and so it is low sugar and healthy. So you're not, the, the truffles are plenty sweet. Yes. My son tried one, very good, and they were, he said, that's kind of intense. They're not intense to me, but he thought that they were a little bit powerful. Um, just a totally off the wall comment, but it's hitting my head. So I'm going to, the grandson that you saw at the beginning is allergic to eggs. And so I have to be really careful to check everything. Oreo cookies do not have any eggs in them. And so he can eat, um, he can eat these truffles and he can eat um, Oreos, which most cookies he can't eat. So if any of you have egg, egg sensitivities or egg allergies, Oreo cookies are safe. <laughs> and I know you were just dying to know that. So um, seriously, I, are there any other questions or comments? I'm so glad you guys joined us. I hope you found something of value and I hope you'll go and make something. Feel free in the Facebook group to post pictures of the things that you make or to make comments on things that you like or if you buried it. Um, lots of times I will sort of follow the recipe, but then vary it. And I know Rebecca varies the recipes. And so if you do a variation, put it in the, put it in the um, comments in Facebook so that we can all um, learn from that. 
And thank you for joining and have a very Merry Christmas and a happy holiday season. Please use good judgment and stay safe. Um, and just have a great time and reach out to any of us. If you've got questions, we would love, 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 love to answer them for you. So have a great evening and we will see you again um, another time when I'm sure that I'll come cook up something else like this to do because this was fun. But good night and thank you very much. And thank you. You are welcome. I'm going to end the Zoom.